This is Shelly Physics Problem Solving Boot Camp Level 1. Now, it might, might seem like a strange title, but let's just look at this problem I've got here. Shelly dives off the school roof in a squirrel suit, gliding to the ground 10 meters below. If his rate of acceleration is 2.5 meters per second squared, how fast is he moving when he lands? So you might be just hit upside the head with a problem like this, and you might be like, what do I do? Um, I've got some numbers, I've got like equations, what do I do? Um, well, it's kind of like boot camp. In military boot camp, um, if you hear, hit the deck, what are you supposed to do? You might know that you're supposed to drop to the ground really quick because there's an enemy nearby and they might be firing weapons at you and getting low to the ground would help save your life. Also in the movie uh, Forrest Gump, there's a scene where Bubba and Forrest are taken apart and reassembling their, their guns, their weapons. And uh, Forrest is like... Drill sergeant and Bub's like grilled shrimp, fried shrimp, shrimp kebab. Anyway, but they're they're taking apart their weapons and putting them back together is something that you learn how to do in boot camp. It's practice and a method that you learn so that when you're faced with a problem, you know exactly what to do right away and you don't have to think about it. So that's what this is about: learning how to approach a problem without having to think about it and knowing what to do to get started every time. So when you're starting on a path, you just have to start taking steps. That's the only way you're gonna to get to the end of that path. So that's what this is about. I've got a problem here. How are we gonna to get to the end of the path? So um, what I've done is put together a tool, uh, just five steps, and you'll be like, oh, just five steps, surely. But uh, if you have this list in front of you and you, you just, um, while you start this process of learning to, to problem solve, having these steps by you helps you to learn them. And once you've got them ingrained, then you don't have to be looking at a list anymore and you just know what to do right away. You know how to get started even if you have no plan to get started with. That's what this problem solving boot camp is about. So our first step is to write down and identify the given values, any implied values and the unknown target write them down. It might seem, I don't know, like a waste of time, but it is probably the best use of time you could have ever. It helps you to get started and also to minimize the errors that you might make. All right, so uh, we're going to identify given values, implieds, and the unknown. And in this problem, we've got all three of those. So what's given? Well, great thing to look for is numbers. Squirrel suit, here by the way, um, diving to the ground in a squirrel suit is not a good idea. It's, yeah, Shelly is not gonna make it here, I don't think. Anyway, gliding to the ground 10 meters below. What is that quantity? 10 meters is a distance or a displacement. It's how far I'm, I'm falling to the ground. So I'm gonna call that X. X is my final position after falling to the ground, 10 meters. Then it gives uh, my rate of acceleration is two and a half meters per second squared. So in writing it down, I'm not just writing down the numbers, I'm labeling them. What is the quantity? This is the X, this is the A. It's gonna make this so much easier later on. I'm gonna be able to put away all the words in a moment and only look at what, what I've written down. And so if his rate of acceleration is two and a half meters per second squared, how fast is he moving when he lands? So how fast? What is that? That's a velocity. But it says when he lands, that what kind of velocity is the starting or the final? Well, that would be the final. It's when he lands. It's at the end of this motion. So the final velocity is the target. So that's my unknown target value that I'm going to be looking for. Okay, so here I've got it. Um, <clears throat> I've got my given X, my given A, and my target VF. Is there any implied values? Well, it says I dive off the school, off the school roof, insanely in a squirrel suit. If you don't know what that is, um, that's okay. It's just like a diving suit. Anyway, um, you, you probably also have a parachute if you're using one of these, so this is not a good idea. But if I dive off the, the roof, it implies a velocity in the beginning. How fast is I, am I moving if I dive? So think of a diver on a diving board. What's the diver's initial speed? 
zero. So the final velocity is what I'm looking for, but the initial velocity is zero. I, I dive off, I drop off. It doesn't say I launch off at a certain speed. I just dive. So uh, that is an implied value there. So now I'm getting ready to move on to the, the next step. Um, we're going to have... Got to move up here in my list. Okay. There's the first step. Write down and identify a given value. So if there you see V equals zero. That gives a uh, implied value there that we use that one. And we identified the unknown target. So next step, check the list to be sure that all units agree and if necessary, convert to standard units. Um, so if I'm looking at this, I've got meters, meters per second squared. So meters and meters agree. And uh, my velocity here is zeros and meters per second. So I, I don't have any conflicts. So if I did have something like minutes in one value and seconds in another, I probably want to multiply that uh, minutes value by 60 to get the number of seconds. But I don't have that problem here. So I, I checked it, made sure I'm not going to make any mistakes with that by... Uh, opposing units. It's always good to put them in seconds, kilograms, meters, meters per second. So as we're, as we're going through motion, what we're only worried about meters and seconds is, is a good, uh, good quantities to, um, or units to convert to if we need to. But there's nothing to do in that step. We just checked it out. Number three this is the important one. Actually, they're all important. But uh, this is usually the one that gets people caught up. Like, what do I do with these numbers? So we're going to select the appropriate equation of motion to use based on the listed given and implied values. We've listed them. They're all here. Um, so I can actually put the words away. Just look at those values. This step may also help you um, find other information that needs to be identified before solving for the target. Looks like you need to put a word in there. Find. This step may also help you find other information or identify other information that needs to be identified before solving for the target. So, um, equations, there they are. This is our, our set of tools. So if I give you a hammer and a nail and you don't know what to do with it, well, it's just a hammer and a nail. But if I give you a board and say, uh, take this board and this other board and attach them together, then you'll have to know how to use that hammer with a nail. Or, or let's say I give you a hammer or a screwdriver, um, a nail and a screw, and I say, put these two boards together. You gotta know that, oh, the, the hammer and the nail are used to, to bang the nail, and the hammer, use the hammer to bang the nail into the, into the one board and attaches the other board. Or I can take the screwdriver and the screw, and I could twist the screwdriver, um, to twist the screw from one board into the other, and that attaches them also. So likewise, the numbers and the data that you have here, these are like the screws or the nails. And looking at the set of equations is like looking at the hammer or the screwdriver. Which one should I select with the given uh, information that I've got here? So with the given information, that's all I need there. 10 meters is the X. I got the A, a VF, and VO. So which of these equations on the list here are going to work with the data that I've got at the bottom? So I've got an X. So you look at this first equation up here. There's no X value in it. There's no X symbol. So I can't use that first one. What about the second one? I've got a X is the 10 meters. I've got A. There's A right there, right? VF, oh wait, the second equation doesn't have a final velocity in it, so I can't really use that one. Well, what about this third equation? Now uh, there's an X, there's an X right there. A, there's my A. VF, ah, I can use VF right there. And VO, do I have VO? Yep. So this third equation is the one I want to use. I'm going to write that down. VF squared equals V0 squared plus 2A x. All right. And now look at this. I don't need the words anymore. I've got everything laid out. That's why I want you to label them. And now all it is is a matter of filling in the knowns. 
the initial velocity is zero. Okay. And this is where it was. If, if you didn't get that initial velocity to start with, at this point you'd be going, whoa, all these equations, they've got a VO. What do I do? I, I don't know what the initial velocity is. So you go back to the text and you go, oh, he dives off. So the initial velocity is zero. So if you had missed that the first time, it's not a problem. You just keep going. If you get stuck, don't stop. Just keep going. Now our acceleration rate is two and a half. And the X is 10. Okay. So we get a final velocity squared. Don't forget that square there equals two times two and a half, which is five. And five times 10 is 50. Okay. And so is our final velocity 50 meters per second? That'd be rather quick. And I don't want to be hitting the ground at that speed. So it's not 50, it's the square root of 50, which will give us the final velocity. So uh, four or seven times seven is 49. So we're looking at probably just a little bit over seven i'll just say 7.1 or so you can put that in calculator if you want meters per second now that is still very quick uh, it's going to be a hard hit on the ground but uh, i might survive anyhow uh, that's how you do it problem solving boot camp level one we're going to identify the givens implied and unknown target we're going to we're going to check our units to make sure our units agree. We're going to identify an equation that works. And then what did I do? What did I do then? Well, that's the rest of it. Pretty obvious from there. Step four is solve for the unknown target value. That's what I did there. Check the units, meters per second. And it's also very good at the end. Consider, does it make sense? 7.1 meters in a second. So one step, one big step, um, as you're walking along is about one meter. So do you think I'm falling about seven steps in a second? That's reasonable. It's not 7,000 and it's not like a couple inches per second. So this is in the realm of reason. So that is a list. If you can take a snapshot, write it down, have it beside you as you problem solve the next few